good? Is the microphone okay? Okay. Um, <clears throat> then I'm, I'm trying to, to, to explain um, what is interesting in this history of free software in the second part. In the third part, I'll do a, a, a short peek into the future of free software and um, of the basic principles we can see in free software. And I'll close with a small wrap-up. <coughs> okay. So, as I said, it is important to understand what uh, the history of something to have an idea how it can develop in the future. So, let's go back 24 years. Uh, this is 1984. At this time, free software existed already. It was very small. It was very hard to notice. There were only a few people who knew about that new phenomenon, free software, which didn't exist before. Uh, the internet, as today, the internet uh, for sure is today one of the most important basic infrastructures for free software. At that time, the internet did not exist in this way. There was no World Wide Web at, the, at this time, and uh, the infrastructure was by far not as, not as developed as it is, is today. Private internet connections were more or less not existent. So at this time, free software already existed, but it was hard to notice. Uh, but it, there were a few very decided persons, like Richard Stallman, who had uh, a lot of idealism. Uh, I think he has, he still has. Um, <clears throat> and Richard Stallman, at this time, just founded the GNU project, one of the foundations of free software. And this was really the early years. And what is important to notice is that there were, there were no similar phenomena. There were free software with some basic principles, but there were nothing which could be compared to free software. The rest of the world was somehow different. But a few basic principles, which will be one of the main points I'll, I make in the second part of the talk, uh, they are already there. They existed already even in these early forms. And um, <clears throat> what we can conclude is that at this time, 1984, it was, it was very hard to even notice this thing, which 20, 24 years later is a rather big thing. And so the very beginnings were maybe very hard to notice. Let's go 12 years. 12 years into the future, that is 1996. Um, at that time, free software was already pretty big. Linux uh, has been developed, the install world started in 1991, and there were also many contributors at that time already. But still, there, it was not very visible. I mean, yeah, there were, there were records about free software and so on, but companies, for instance, didn't take it serious. He said, well, we have Microsoft, and that is what we are running on. The admins, they had their Linux boxes already, but they didn't talk about that. And um, <clears throat> it was still not very visible, and it was not taken very serious. But it was there. And um, the basic principles, which had been uh, in place already in 1984, were still there. As I said, I'll come back to these basic principles later. But still, there are no similar phenomena. There were free software, but there was nothing which could be compared to free software. And I think it is important to note that um, this good idea of free software grew during these 12 years, not because it was a, uh, a political program or something like that, but because people liked it. It helped people to do, to do what they liked, and that was the very reason why they engaged in free software, why they contributed to free software. Um, <coughs> so we are slowly, oh well, now we are jumping to today. Free software is here to stay. I think that is really not disputable anymore. Free software exists, it is big, it is, has lots of contributors. 
um, always, uh, also companies, meanwhile, use free software or even contribute to free software. So it is uh, also, meanwhile, uh, in, in part of the, the corporate world. Uh, there is a sustainable and enduring economy. Uh, when I say economy, I mean a system where goods are produced and distributed. In this sense, free software is for sure an economy, and it is sustainable. I mean, it's already 24 years and a few more, um, <clears throat> and there is no end in, in, in sight also. Um, but this is also important when one talks of economy. It is not an economic economy which is based on exchange. Many people in the free software, um, <clears throat> in the free software world still do volunteer for projects and do contribute to projects on a, on, on a voluntary basis. There are also corporations who pay, uh, who pay persons for, for contributing, that's, that's true. But I think, and as far as I can see, there's still this, this volunteering in, in free software. Um, free software is very visible. Uh, it is commonplace, meanwhile, and it is still growing. I think the final frontier uh, which we see is uh, the desktop. Uh, free software is not so strong on the desktop still, but there is Ubuntu, and I think Ubuntu will help us very much here. Um, and today, we see phenomena which are very similar to free software. Um, back in 1996, there were no phenomena which are similar. There were uh, people started to get inspired from free software, from the ideas which they see there. But there were no visible projects. Today, we have things like Wikipedia. It's probably the most or the best known uh, phenomenon, which is quite similar to, to free software in many, in many respects. We have a big body of work which is based on Creative Commons license, licenses. We have something which you might not know, um, <clears throat> something which is called open access. This is a similar movement in, in the science where scientists say, well, we, we want uh, that our work is, uh, is available for free. And so set up institutions and servers and so on where their work is available for, for them and for the general public. Um, <clears throat> we have things like free music uh, and also other media, Flickr, you name it. Um, the successful example of free software, and free software was really successful in these 25 years, the successful example of free software inspired all these things. That is very, very important to note. And for instance, Wikipedia is based on the very same principles. There are volunteers who say, well, we want to have a big encyclopedia, which is really good, and they work on that. I mean, Wikipedia is in many respects different to free software because they, they are creating encyclopedia. And free software, and free so in software, it is easy if things run or don't. <laughs> is a, a Wikipedia article doesn't run or not. <laughs> That is, for instance, one thing which is very different from free software. But in many respects, it's, it's quite, quite similar. Um, the basic principles, which i come to in a moment, um, turned out to be very successful. So successful that others, other projects on the same uh, foundation, on the same principles, have been founded and also successful. And I think what we can see is that these basic principles, which we saw already in 1984, are strong enough to spread out into other fields. So I talked a lot of, about these basic principles. What are they? The first basic principle um, is something we call Selbstentfaltung. We call this with the German word because there is no good word in English also. Um, Selbstentfaltung is a quite complex concept. Simplified, you can say, it's having fun individually. This is Linus Torvalds, have fun. This book is named in this way. But there is also this maintenance of a relationship to society. I mean, free software is something which is useful for a lot of people. 
And so there is a relationship between a free software project and the society as a whole. And this is more or less the core idea of, core idea of, free, of self-entfaltung. As I said, it is a, it is a quite complex concept, um, complex reasoning, why this is uh, something which is part of every human. Uh, this comes from critical psychology. Um, I can only ask you to just believe me that this is, is a fundamental motivator for humans to do something. Uh, one of the nice things of Selbstentfaltung is that uh, it is different for every human, for every individual. What is Selbstentfaltung for me may be a pain for you and vice versa. So, if you look at the society, we have a lot of tasks which needs to be done that the society runs completely. And the good news is that based on Selbstentfaltung, we have lots of people who probably might want to do all of these tasks. We might, we might find Selbstentfaltung in doing uh, any of these tasks. <coughs> Selbstentfaltung also includes responsibi responsibility. Um, I mean, if um, Linux, Linux Torvalds, for instance, decides that gets into the kernel and that not, that is a sort of responsibility. He takes responsibility for um, making the kernel the best he can. And that is also part of, of Selbstentfaltung. <clears throat> what we can see as an important expression of Selbstentfaltung is volunteering for useful tasks. That is commonplace in, in, in free software projects, but also in these similar Phenomenons uh, we see like um, Wikipedia or all the other uh, projects. So um, I think it is really important to note that this type of selbstentfaltung was really present in 1984 and is still present today. And this is um, <clears throat> in a few slides I will I will explain why this is so important and why this is also. Uh, a reason for the big success of free software. Um, and what is also really interesting is that this is a combination of what is useful for society and useful for the individual at the same time. This is something historical quite new. Normally you have um, well the society on the one hand and the individual on the other hand and these and these contradict in, in some way. Selbstentfaltung combines them in a, in a useful and positive manner, and that's something which is really interesting and, and of course, something which basically we all want. <coughs> uh, the other basic principle is openness. Openness in free software and similar phenomena comes in two ways. Uh, there's, on the one hand, there's internal openness, something we call internal openness. Everyone may contribute. Everyone may contribute to free software project. He may contribute code, he may contribute ideas, he may contribute bug fixes, he may contribute this, that, uh, a nice home page, you name it. This is different to what we see in corporations, for instance. I cannot, I cannot contribute to the development of a product of, a, say, uh, say B, BMW. Or so yeah, that's not possible. And this is closed. In free software, we have these open projects who have usually some some sort of um, a website or so. You can contact them. You can contribute to that. Um, <clears throat> this is what we call internal openness. But of course, we have also external openness. The products of these free software projects and also of the other projects I named, Wikipedia, Open Access, and so on, are free for everyone to use. Everyone is, uh, is allowed to use these results. The GPL has some, some restrictions. You, if, you, if you change it, you have to, to, to give the, the source code, but and this is rather small. So these, this openness was also present from day one of free software. Um, <clears throat> it is important to note that we have a certain technology here which plays a major role in this, and this is digital copy. Digital copy is something, something which is historically new, 
uh, before the digital copy, there was no no way to to copy things, copy information without loss. I mean, we have these uh, 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 machines which which copy on paper, but there's always a loss because this, this is not digital. In digital copy, you have you cannot uh, distinguish the original from the copy, and this is a new technology. And the internet um, globalizes this. The internet is more or less a global copy system for digital data. And the openness I named is, of course, um, enabled by this digital copy. On the one hand, the openness to use the results, of course, that's clear. I mean, everybody can download things from, from the internet. Uh, but it also, it made it easier to contribute, to find each other, to, to found projects and all this. This was, this was possible by, uh, by the technology of digital copy. And <coughs> so we see technology may make way for some new societal phenomenon. This could have been before, but there was no technological enabler to, to make this happen. So <clears throat> what I really like is uh, this free and free software really means um, the internal openness is a prerequisite for external openness and vice versa. This is a, a cycle. The inter internal openness uh, allows people to contribute and make product, make interesting products which go out to the, to the, to, to the general public and which on the other hand um, makes it uh, possible again that, that people contribute. This is a, a positive cycle, uh, a positive feedback cycle. And this is, I think, one of the important motors of free software and on similar projects. So, um, <clears throat> to make it a bit more theoretical, what we see here, uh, I say it's a new mode of production. What is a mode of production? A mode of production describes societal facilities to produce goods. For instance, capitalism is a mode of production. Capitalism is a certain way to organize society to produce goods. In capitalism, for instance, there is money, which plays an important role. This is, this is a mode of production. What is really exciting um, about free software is that here a new mode of production emerges. Um, <clears throat> we see that since 25 years we have this phenomenon of free software. It, it, uh, there is an economy which is sustainable and enduring. There is inspiring for other uh, people who have projects which are on, on a similar, uh, which, which are very similar to free software. And so I think Today we can see, when we started in 1999, there were many questions, well, uh, <clears throat> is this really this new mode of production today? I, I mean, we, we are nine years later, and I think it is more clear now that uh, this mode of production is useful also for other fields than software, and that, that it has a certain strength. And um, <clears throat> as I said before, uh, an important part of that economy that there is no exchange in the core of peer production. In, in, in free software projects, there's no such thing like, um, uh, you only get that if you give me this or that, for instance, money or so. Um, <clears throat> that is, people, people usually say, well, I'd like to do that, or like, uh, well, I don't like to do that, but there's no, give me that, and then I give you that. This type of exchange does not happen in, in the core of, of peer production. We call this, uh, at the moment, we call this peer production because it's a more general uh, term. Well, but that is interesting because uh, classical economy says, well, if there is no exchange, then this is doomed to fail. This, this cannot work. But it does work. It exists. It grows. And it is, it is mimicked in other uh, fields than, than software. So there seems to be something wrong with classic economy. Um, and one of the interesting questions, of course, is 
where does the power of these new principles come from or where does the power of this mode of production come from? Whereas I think the power really comes from these basic principles. On the one hand, there's the Selbstentfaltung, and Selbstentfaltung leads to absolute quality. In capitalism, you have only relative quality. You, don't, you have to be better or as good as your competitor, but you don't have something like absolute quality. But if it is your thing, if, if you are contributing to a free software project, then you want to be proud of it. You want to make it the best you, you are capable of. And that is something which is not part of capitalism. That's simply not a concept there. And in free software projects, also there's no boss from, from stopping you to do that. If the, the maintainer doesn't like it, then you just fork and do your own thing. And if you, if you are right and a lot of people follow you, then your project will be, or your fork will be successful. Um, <clears throat> This is one of the, the sources of the power that Selbstentfaltung leads to absolute quality. And the other, uh, the other source of power is this positive feedback cycle of openness, which I described before. And what we see is that these principles uh, are, are obviously stronger than, than those of proprietary software. If it would not be the case, then Microsoft, for instance, would not start to, to embrace free software and to, uh, I mean, let's think um, 20 years back, at that time, Microsoft laughed about free software. And meanwhile, they are, they need to engage in free software somehow. They, 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 they cannot evade it anymore. Um, and I mean, in, many, in some respects, free software and proprietary software are competitors on the market. I mean, I can choose whether I, I, I use free software or, or Windows or Linux. And, and uh, this is also a in, 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 uh, in hint that we have a new mode of production which is really successful because that is, I think, the first time in history that um, something which, which grew out of some hobby of some, some freaking, <laughs> freakish uh, developers uh, was stronger than, than proprietary software. And, well, <clears throat> one of the Equinox cases is, is that um, this new mode of production, which we see emerging here, leads to a new society. I said capitalism is a mode of production, and we all know that this mode of production really determines what determines all of society. What we do is more or less uh, <coughs> uh, de determined by how capitalism works. We, we need to go. We need to labor to to earn money and so on. And this is all part of this mode of production. So the power comes from new principles and. Um, because we have a new mode of production that may lead to new society. So <clears throat> now I told you a bit about uh, the basic principles. Now I want to talk a bit about how development occurs. Uh, one of the key terms we use here is, uh, this is also a, th a theory which comes from uh, critical psychology, but I think it is really interesting and generally applicable. Um, one of the important terms is germ form, in German, Keim form. A germ form is something which is based on new principles, like free software. I said these are, there are some, some principles which are new, and so software, free software can, can, uh, can be used as an example of a germ form. Germ forms <coughs> develop in five steps. I, shortly outline these steps. Um, first, there is an emergent step. Uh, during the emergent step, there is, well, there is some germ form that is hard to notice, and it may, uh, it may vanish again. Uh, think free software in 1984. That was a perfect example of a germ form in the emergent step. There were new principles, it emerged in the old thing, and uh, it was hard to notice, and it could have been vanished, but it, did, it didn't. Second, there is a crisis step of uh, a crisis step where the old form gets into a crisis. When you look at free software, then 
<clears throat> you can see that um, there is a crisis on the mid-range servers. There was Unix, but Unix was, well, was a good idea, but then it became propriety and well, it was really difficult to, to have a Unix and it uh, became broader and broader. And this, well, at that point, Microsoft said, well, we have uh, <coughs> Windows NT and how about running that? And admins really thought, oh, well, <coughs> please know this. Um, so there was a crisis. That was certainly one point where Linux especially had a, ch had a chance. <clears throat> um, then the third step of such a five-step model is the expansion step. In the expansion step, the germ form becomes an important, becomes important in the old process. It becomes part of the old process. Um, and it becomes important. I mean, that free software is important. I, uh, it's probably not, not necessary to explain that, but the, the, the complete internet is not thinkable without free software. I mean, I, I guess every mail which, which goes over the internet touches some free, free, uh, <coughs> free sent mail or postfix or <laughs> whatever. Um, <coughs> and also Apache, for instance, for, for the web servers. The internet as it is today is not thinkable without free software. And so, and the internet is of course an important aspect of, of modern life. So today we can see that free software is in the expansion step. The key question at this point is whether can the old form um, integrate the germ form somehow? I think this is not possible for free software because of the openness. Capitalism needs closeness and because of the Selbstentfaltung. Selbstentfaltung is not possible in capitalism, at least not to the degree uh, we see in free software. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the other steps are not so interesting. There's a dominant step um, where the germ form becomes the dominant form. That w would be for, for software, that uh, propriety software is on the decline. And the fifth step is a restructuring step where the overall process is um, restructured so the needs, uh, the needs of the new form are then um, they are part of the entire system process. I think it, is <coughs> it can be said that for software, free software is in its expansion step and for society uh, peer production as we see today marks the emergent step I think that, that there's really some, some, some chance that or some hope <laughs> that, uh, that we can have a society based on these principles we see that today only in the emergent step and um, what the future brings is hard to say uh, especially if you look at a successful germ form which developed, well, which, which get into the expansion step 20, 200 years back. That is capitalism. I said that is a mode of production. And it really fits nicely into the five step model. <clears throat> the emergent step of capitalism happened long ago, even during the Roman Empire. There were things which you could, you could say, well, Later in capitalism, this, this was also important. Uh, the crisis step of capitalism or the fall capitalism happened when, when the feudal principles exhausted, that were the Enlightenment, for instance, that were one of these, the major things which brought feudalism and religion and all this, these things uh, to a crisis. And capitalism used that. And the start of ex its expansion step, and I think one of the yeah, textile industry is one of the, the most important things here. Um, today we see the dominant step, of course. Maybe you can say we all, also the, the, the complete system is restructured. There are some places on Earth where capitalism is not, still not the dominant system, but well. You can say it is more or less restructured. The global system is restructured to the needs of capitalism. 
So what we can see when we see capitalism as a germ form, or once a germ form, we can see that a new mode of production as a germ form can take over the whole system process. So if I'm right, if free software marks, or free software contains principles which mark a new mode of production, there is the chance that this may take over at some point. Okay, <clears throat> so I uh, tried to explain or I explained um, uh, a bit about the, the history of free software and also about, about the important principles, mode of production and all, all that. And in the third part, I will try a, thought, a short peek into the future. But that cannot be done without some words of caution. Ex expansion steps, as I explained, are very chaotic. Um, remember, there is something old, and this, of course, fights with the new. It, it goes in parallel with it, but it also fights it. Um, <clears throat> and this is... Um, Fights are not a good basis for some straight linear development, and so there is there's chaos ahead. Uh, in particular, it is very hard to foresee timing. You know, I can this hard to see to say what is in 12 years, what is in 50 years. Um, but also interesting to note uh, in chaotic processes, small actions can have major effort, effort, uh, effects. You know about that butterfly principle. So you can make a difference. Also, there are a lot of external constraints. For instance, if uh, nature is destroyed too quickly, then there probably will, no, will be no civilization anymore, and of course, no free software based civilization. Um, this depends very much on the development of the overall process. And as I said, <clears throat> when peer production marks the emergent step of a new mode of production, then we are at the point where, well, 18, 1808 is probably also a, a bit later than we are at the moment. And 200 years back, nobody were able to imagine how the world of today looks like. That was simply not possible. It was not thinkable. And so it is very, very dangerous to, to look into the future and to think that it will be. But the question here was only for 12 years, so um, it's, it's a bit easier for me. <clears throat> um, I think one of the things we will see is vertical expansion. Vertical expansion means that things which are already present will go deeper. Free software will be common on the desktop 12 years, I think that is not too, too uh, courageous to say that. I think also most software will be free. At least this, this, uh, this sort of software which, um, which, uh, which profits from, from being free. I mean, there's a lot of software which runs in, in corporations which is so special for this corporation. It does not make much sense to make this free. But um, <clears throat> other software, I think most of it will be free. Also, we see in, in Wikipedia there are serious governance problems. Um, I think those will be history. Either, um, either what, because Wikipedia found ways to cope th uh, with them, or if, uh, or because there will be a fork of Wikipedia which solves these government problems in a in a way which is accepted by by the world. Also, I think open access. This free science thing is standard in science. You see already in the governments, people who say, well, open access is a good thing. We want to have that. And I think uh, in 12 years, we will have much more open access, and it will be really st standard. Lots of free music uh, will, be available, will be available in 12 years. You see already sites like Jamendo or something, which uh, <coughs> distribute free music based on, common, uh, on Creative Commons licenses. And that will be far more standard in 12 years. Also, lots of your favorite project here uh, will be available. I mean, there are so many projects out there. I think this will all deepen. I think the rattle expansion is quite sure. 
but there also will be some horizontal expansion. That means that it spreads out into other fields. Um, <clears throat> more fields will follow those basic principles. Uh, I think it is important to note that these basic principles generally apply to all creative work. Selbstentfaltung is something which is really useful if you do creative work. It is not useful if you have to to uh, work at an assembly line or something like that. That is their Selbstentfaltung only a pain. <laughs> uh, but for creative work it is really something useful. And so fields where creative work is necessary and, and uh, I mean that uh, today these, there are many many fields where creative work is, is necessary. These will profit from, from those basic principles. Um, <clears throat> Of course, also, as I said, because of digital copy, external openness, the openness to that, that uh, things are products are um, publicly available, that is easier for information products because of the digital copy. And of course, it is also easier when you don't need lots of expensive infrastructure. For instance, there are people there which they which say we need free medicine because. Um, medicine, the pharma industry is quite good in earning money, and, um, but in the third world, for instance, medicine is something which, which many people cannot afford. So free medicine would be really a good thing, free medicine in the sense of free of patents, so you can have, um, <clears throat> you can have an, uh, a company which, which produces, them, produces these free medicine without um, paying patents fees. But even then, you need infrastructure to to produce these things. Generally, in the material world, things are more difficult. That's clear. But well, I think there is also hope. I won't expand on that here because that then it's really too long. Some gases free. There will be free pharmaceutical information in 12 years. There will might be also free genetic information. There's already the Human Genome Project, which. Uh, has a lot of free information about the human genome. Free hardware designs will be picked up by the industry. And also, and I think this is something which is quite probable, that free car designs, which are uh, some projects out there, will be picked up by industry. And there will be something like a free car, which is created or built by, by some normal car manufacturer. But the, the, uh, it is based on, on information created by a free project. Um, <clears throat> and finally, I think there will be some deeper embedding. The principles, we, well, let's, uh, let's when, when I went back 12 years, then I said, well, free software was visible, was, was not very visible, and was not very accepted. Today we are in a, in a, in a situation where free software is quite accepted, and the principles of free software are more widely accepted. I think this will, this will go, go on. <clears throat> I also think that states will further this, <coughs> this whole thing more. Maybe there's some basic income if you do that type of activity. It is thinkable. Um, and also I think companies will exploit these principles principles more and more. If you're interested in, in this part, I, I can only recommend reading Eric, uh, Eric van Hippel's work on user innovation, which is really interesting. Uh, who's not into free software, but shows how companies profit from users of their products. Um, and that is, in, in many respects, well, it's very similar to free software. And uh, yeah. I think in 12 years, there won't happen much more. Uh, yeah. And that was my peek into the future. Short summary. Um, free software took time to take off. We saw 25 years of taking off. Uh, the basic principles are selbstentfaltung and openness. These are important, and these are still there. Uh, on this basis, a new mode of production emerges, 
It is still in its, in its early phase, in its very early phase. And that mode of production will determine the future. That will be what we see in, I think, well, 500 years from, from now, this will, will be standard. In the meantime, it is hard to say. And we are at the moment witnessing the very first steps into a new epoch, and into a new era of mankind. And so we are living in very interesting times. And I think in 2020, you will know a bit better whether I'm right or wrong. Yeah, thank you for listening. If you want to know more about this, you may surf to um, www.ökonomics.org. There's the, the international homepage. You may contact me. And also we are doing uh, our next conference in Manchester in, at the end of March of next year. If you like, go there. It will be quite interesting. Okay, thank you for for your attention and I'm also That is a really good question. <laughs> to read Richard's mind is al always a difficult thing. <laughs> hmm? Yeah, I had contact with him. Um, well, the interesting thing with, with Richard Stallman is that um, he always said, well, this is a political thing. And I think he was right in, the, in that. But he didn't, he was not able to see how much it was a, a political thing. And I still, and I think today, maybe he, he, he thinks that some of this is right, but he cannot, uh, he cannot say that in public, because then free software is, is um, uh, connected to strange political ideas <laughs> and so on, and that is not, not so good for free software. I mean, this project can say th things like that, and that's okay. Uh, but Richard Stallman is, is in a different position, so it's hard to say what he really thinks about that. I think it would be really interesting to read uh, what Wikipedia uh, writes about this uh, century, maybe Yeah, <laughs> certainly. <laughs> I'm open for discussion. Any questions? Yeah. Um, capitalism is a very stable system. You know? it, maybe not in the long term, but certainly for the short term it works. And it's outdone a couple of other um, methodologies kind of in, in societies and economics. Um, is, is this also a long term stable solution? Because at the, at the moment it is a minority solution, you know? Um, will it grow out of the minority into the majority? I mean, is it stable to do that? Because we're relying on the, a high level of expertise and skill of, of certain people. Not everybody can do this. No, not everybody. But I think this is, this is, not a, this is a question of, of every modern society. Modern societies are so complex that you need experts. So if you don't want to go back to, to some society where, um, <clears throat> without industry, for instance, then you, you have to have that level of expert, expertise at some point. But I think um, in free software we see that, well, for 24, 25 years now, but we see that these basic principles are capable of building a new economy, at least in this, in this sphere. So if it can be, if it is, you know, if it can be transferred to, to other fields like, it is, like we can see today, like Wikipedia or so. And if it can be transferred somehow to, to, um, to material production, or maybe if information production gets more important than material production, so material production becomes only an appendix to, to information production. That is what we see with, with um, agriculture 
in, in the industry, industrial si uh, centuries, aquaculture was in the fuel sign, uh, in the fuel uh, time was absolutely important. It was in the center of societies. Today, aquaculture is an appendix of industry. It's not, not it is there anymore, but it's not so important. And if you think that capitalism was a system to to create all this ability to cope with material production, then you can say, well, this was important capitalism, and it may be only an appendix to information, to an information-based society, which we see a mode of production for in free software, and so. That is also a very interesting question. My, my position at that point is that what we see, what we see for instance, for the anti-globalization movement or things like uh, socialism or anarchism, these are all very much related to capitalism. What we see here in free software is something which is really new. For instance, if you do ask about democracy, there is little democracy in free software. You have other, other governance systems now, maintenance of maintainership, for instance, is an important, one of the most important um, <clears throat> governance mechanisms in free software. And that works in free software because of that volunteership. Yeah? If you have only volunteers, you cannot be a dictator. Yeah? Because if you are a dictator and uh, step on everyone to everyone's toes all the time, then they will leave the project and will fork. This is not possible. So, so if, you, if you are a maintainer of a project, you have to be mm, smart, <laughs> and you have to be kind to the people. And so maintainership is something that really works well in, in free software. But it's not, not democracy, for well, instance. It's not only in the field of free software. It's like um, it's going to uh, expand uh, the uh, larger market in the free world. Like, uh, for example, um, okay, what, uh, what fuels the countries at the time being can you, can you speak a bit louder, please? Yeah. What is doing in the world at the moment is really money. Mm. Although the country is not everything else. So my question is, is maybe in 50 years, freedom... Your question is, so. Like in 50 years, yeah. freedom going to abuse over the country? Like, for example, there would be really... Uh, a worldwide democracy system, uh, like over all countries, like freedom over all countries, and things like that. Will there be countries? <laughs> I mean, there are societal and things like that. I think, I think if, if we really look into, into what we see in free software, be, free software is interesting in so far because it is the most um, developed form at the moment. Um, then we see that, that as I said, things like democracy and so on don't, don't fit very well. And so it is, I, I don't think there will be, in, in 50 years, there will be a global democracy. There will be something. If, if we have a, a society based on peer production, there will be, of course, some governance system. I can, at, at the moment, I cannot say how, do, how it will be structured. No. That, is, that is something which is probably very hard to say, at, especially on a global basis. But I think it will not be democracy. There, there will be a lot of part participation. That, 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 I think that is quite sure, but it will not be democracy as we know it, with votes and, and all these things. Concerning the second last question, I want to point out a 
you ask that question. I just wanted to point out that, that I think the crucial point is um, if the transfer to material production can be made, not if there are some kind of experts or some kind of leadership, because that um, free software has proven that uh, this works actually with these principles. I agree. I mean, the, it's, what can be more complex than software? Actually? <laughs> I mean, it has shown that it can manage complex processes and complex products. Mm -hmm. But there are monopolies and governments that are, uh, have a keen interest in preventing that. Right. Yeah, but but Microsoft has also, very, but Microsoft had also has very much interest in, in preventing that they were not able. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for the comment. I just wanted to mention one thing that Mick said. Mick, can you confirm it? There's a state in America where they're actually voting on their own laws. Oh. User particip participation. Oh. Well, I've read about. Uh, some part of a state government uh, somewhere in the U.S. where the congressmen were doing like a Wikipedia style of allowing all the citizens to help draft the laws, where the congressmen were sort of acting in the role of a package maintainer would in, in our open source ecosystem. I mean, and that's 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 really uh, exciting. You know, ask the people what they think about the laws. Yeah. And that is, that is what I call internal openness. You, know? you can contribute to the law you know, in some way. And that, that is really interesting. Yeah. How long have they been doing that? I think it's quite a bit. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
to do something in a free software project is to, to have some additional use value. And that is completely different in, in capitalism. In, in capitalism, you want, to, uh, you want to have additional exchange value. And that is something completely different from use value. And so if, you have, if you think that you have a society which is based on all these principles, then I think these questions are of minor importance. Yeah. Well, we define scarcity as well, we, we distinguish between limitedness mm -hmm. and scarcity. Scarcity is something which is um, made by society. Limitedness is something absolute or more or less absolute. Uh, it is, there are only three apples. But there may be only three apples, but in a societal context, you may say, well, then next year we would use more apples if, if three are not enough. Uh, Any more questions or comments? I just, I just think that um, the thing about 12 years to, to adapt that kind of system to, to production of, of cars or something, I don't think this is possible because I don't think that a kind of manufacturer of cars want to know us what they put in the cars uh, of goods, of, of metal or stuff like that. Sharing information is one hard thing to, to imagine that the, the, all the, the manufacturers will there share their signs and they put that lot of money in with us. But we see that that is, that is capable if you, if you have so many eyes to see that it's, it's, it's grown that fast that somebody who's hiding it is not capable for it to, to, to be that fast. It will just grow as big and then it will just be bigger. But uh, the, the, one, the other thing is that if you open the process, the process as, as a manufacturer, you, you have a lot of eyes seeing what you're doing. And I think that is not um, as good as we think um, think that uh, a car is that good built at all. With, with such good, uh, yeah. I think that you, you cannot expect that it will come from that area, from, from the mainstream. They will be forced, of course. No, so they will no, no, no. They will. I think oh, as soon as it's one or two really good performing, well, chaotic group of people who perform somewhere in, in, a, in a place. Yeah, of, uh, and there are. And there are some people already thinking with it. There's a project called OSCAR, which exactly. has been for years. Yeah, but or, or CMNN, for yeah, instance. And, yeah. um, and the other thing is that actually um, the distributions like Fedora or Lusa, yeah. they allow you to look exactly into the process, how they develop. Yeah. And you can see every bit and byte, and you can moan about everything. And when question is this possible for common Yes, yeah, of course. Well, I think it just would be take much more time for them to... to there will be a lot of manufacturers crash. So, uh, just, just let me shortly interrupt you. We had, uh, we had on the first conference, we had this OS car project, and um, the guy who were there, he, uh, who, who gave us a talk, he said, well, when I invented that, there were uh, lots of people who said, well, that's a good project, I'm a car engineer, I want to work for that project, I want to contribute for that project. So this is not opening up a, a closed source thing, so, but building something new. And also, what he also said, the, the car industry was very interested in that project because the car industry said, well, we have our, <clears throat> our um, uh, program of cars and because of our image we cannot build small cars. And they are, they wanted, this project wanted to build a small car. And so if you, if you make this as a free project, we might be interested in producing it. So, maybe 12 years later. Facilitate it somehow, like uh, Red Hat facilitates Fedora in some house. So, then we'll, I won't be able to come. Yes. Sorry, <laughs> to, <laughs> I'm sorry to stop you here. No, that the uh, discussion is getting really interesting. <laughs> but uh, I have to look at the time, and we are finished. Sorry. Okay.